All right, we're speaking with Georges Genty here at the New York Comic Con. Georges, thank you for speaking with Slayer Litz. Thank you for having me, Slayer Litz. How's the con going for you? It's going very well. This is actually the first time I've been here since 94, so it's been a while, and of course I wasn't doing Buffy at the time, so... Do you know what? The last time, the only time I was ever here before was 1994. 94. So how do you like that? I met the Brian Michael Bendis and Artis Alley, and no one knew who he was, I know, right? so I had a yeah. nice long chat with him. Oh my God, I bought an Adam Hughes page for like $65 when <laughs> I was there. I totally understand. <laughs> So, you've told the story many times of how, out of the blue, without ever actually knowing them, uh, Scott Alley and Joss Whedon called you up and asked you to do the new Buffy comic. Yeah, well, they emailed me, but yeah, just out of the blue. Has there been an instance since where they said, yeah, we thought you were someone else, that was a mistake? I was thinking they were thinking that all along, actually, and that this ruse would be discovered at some point. <laughs> I would be uh, summarily taken off the book, but uh, no, I don't think they found out yet. <laughs> <laughs> Obviously, the, the look you've captured in the book, you don't simply get... A likeness of the actors because there's some artists who will draw directly from a picture and that frame will look just like the photo and then every other panel really doesn't look like that right. you've done an excellent job not only capturing the features but I can see the body language of the, of the individual actors how Thank much kind of what kind of study do you put into that do you watch a lot uh, of video well, Josh was really adamant about saying look I don't want it to be photo you know that's not what I want to do this book for mm -hmm. so you and, and he put it actually in a very good perspective as an artist for me he said, I want you to draw Buffy. I'm not interested in you drawing Sarah Michelle Kelly. And that just put it into perspective for me right there. So from there, I was like, yeah, uh, doing the book, uh, is, I think it's, I don't know, the two schools, you know, when you're a professional and you're hired for a job, you'll do the best job you can because mm -hmm. you're the professional. If there are these nuances that you say, hey, they actually stand that way or they look that way or they do that, it's because I'm a fan as well and as I'm drawing them, I'm asking myself, would Xander really do this, or how would Xander convey this dialogue? And I just sort of retreat to my um, years of look, or my my episodes of Buffy, and say, okay, let me watch a couple of episodes, let me see if I can get that down, and I just kind of go from there. So it's more of a personal touch, as well as a professional touch. Ooh, that was good. <laughs> What's your drawing discipline like? Do you do it when you wake up in the morning? Do you do it uh, during set hours yeah, during the day? Yeah, I'm one of those 9 to 5 guys. I definitely treat it like a job. Mm -hmm. Probably more like 8 to 7, though. Yeah, but I do treat it like a job, and I try to work a certain set hours, and then once those hours are over, I really do try to get away, because I think you need to get away from something in order to come back to it. Mm -hmm. Now, Joss works full script? Yes, everyone does. Uh, Joss, uh, Drew Goddard, Jane Espenson... Stephen tonight, everybody who's been working with us does. Do you thumbnail out an issue as you're about to draw it, or do you just kind of lay it out on the page? If you like it, then you go with it. Man, I read, God, I must read an issue four or five times. And yeah, I do thumbnails, I do layouts, I do everything. And I just it just slowly builds up. Yeah, so I've essentially laid out the whole book before I've ever actually drawn it, per se. And from there, I, I, I guess that's where I start to ask myself, what are the nuances, mm -hmm. you know? If this is all of them sitting at a table, what would Buffy do? What would you know Xander do? What would Giles do in that mm -hmm. situation? So I really have to think, even after I've laid it out, that, okay, I've, I've told the story. Now how do I make it personal to the characters themselves? Okay. When you read the script and you're looking for an idea for the cover, what is it that jumps out at you that makes you want to do that? Uh, as a lot cover? of the time, it's you know sometimes the writer Joss will have something he'll suggest. The editor Scott mm -hmm. Alley might have something he'll suggest. Uh, Sierra Han, the assistant editor, may have something. And what I try to do is take everybody's suggestions, illustrate them, or make them as thumbnails. And whatever suggestions I think I have, and I give it to everybody. It's it's very much a democracy. We all sort of look at them and go, okay, I like, um, there's maybe 16 of them. I like number five. Uh, I like number eight. And then I pretty much go with what everybody likes. They all, they're very nice to defer to me and say, you know, you're the artist. Whatever you really like, you know, definitely go mm -hmm. with it. But yeah, this is one of the ones we're suggesting. Any of the characters still giving a hard time getting a handle on yet? All of them, yeah. <laughs> I, well, I say that. Um, probably Andrew more than any of them. I don't know why. I think I know why. Well, he hasn't appeared as much. Even more so when you do watch him. He's so animated. He's so he's not passive at all. He's no. so animated. It's hard to do that on paper. It's great to watch him act. Tom Lank, great actor, and he, he, Andrew will always be synonymous with him. But to do that on a 2D level, oh, it's so hard to say, am I getting his essence? You know, mm -hmm. because he's such a... I, I look at him and I, I think of Tigger. You know, he's always kind of <laughs> bouncing around and doing stuff. And it's like, how do you capture that? 
he's almost like a living cartoon. Yeah. Oh, pretty much. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, Jo Chen obviously is getting a great deal of fame for her painted covers. Are we ever going to see a painted cover from you? No, I'm not much of the painted uh, aspect. I am doing the alternate cover. Well, now the, the now it's no longer the alternate covers per se. They're just the secondary covers. Mm -hmm. um, and I've been doing those. Um, Painting-wise, I have colored some of my stuff in the past, but I don't know if there's painting in my future. Uh, have you ever suggested anything to Joss? Has any story ideas? Maybe you'd like to see something incorporated. Um, yeah, a little. Th and he'll ask. He'll ask, what do you want to draw? What do you like to do? What do you, I really want you to be happy with what you're doing, so let me know. And I've, I've little things here and there. Um, I'm, I, I have to say I'm more so much a fan that I'm like, Joss, I just like to get the script and read it. So I don't sit down and think, well, this is what I want to do. Try to conform to what it is. I'm thinking, wow, I'm one of the first guys to actually read a new Joss Wheaton script or Jane Espenson or somebody like that. Right. Do you like to sneak in little personal things into the artwork? Always. Or? I am notorious for something like that. <laughs> you know, like, and now with all the Buffy stuff, like with the first issue cover that I did, Buffy's actually wearing the shirt that has the Serenity logo on it. Yes. And, you know, it's just those little subtleties that... The, obviously, Buffy fans will get, and since I'm a comic fan, I, I usually put some comic little references in there that the comic fans would get, I'm like a huge Prince fan and Godzilla fan, so those <laughs> things will pop up here and there. When they went to Japan, there was a lot of Godzilla stuff. How much fun did you have drawing Mechadon? Oh, I was loving it. Even more so, <laughs> Drew Goddard, who wrote that issue, was a Buffy writer as well. He was loving it. He said to Joss, because Joss apparently had suggested the idea and what it would be, and I, I think it was as a throwaway, he said, you know, and it, wouldn't it be funny if, you know, Giant Dawn had to come up against a Mechadon or something? And Drew was like, oh my God, just try and make me not write that because that's in the script. I don't care what else is in it, that's going to be in the script. <laughs> um, what comics do you like to read? I mean, just for pleasure. Everything. Uh, Thor is really good right now. Michael J. Straczynski. Mm -hmm. uh, the Avengers. Michael, okay. Brian it's Michael Bendis is obviously, obviously uh, something really good. Just anything concrete from Paul Chadwick, whenever that comes out, Hellboy, whenever that comes out. You know, just really good stuff. I'm uh, I'm very much a comic fan, so I'll read about anything. Yeah. Well, obviously you're well known now for the, the buff work. In fact, yesterday I saw George Perez make a point of coming over your table to shake your hand. George and I have known Which... each other for a while, and I don't know why he does that, because I always think we don't know each other as well as we do, <laughs> apparently. And yeah, he'll just come over, hey, George, how you doing? And I'm, wow, George Perez just shook my hand. Cool. Well, what amongst your earlier work would you like Buffy fans to maybe check out? Something you're really proud of? Uh, actually, right before Buffy, I did something called The American Way for mm -hmm. uh, Wildstorm. And that was a really good political mm -hmm. uh, period piece. It was set in the early 60s. About, funny enough, now that we have a new president, uh, the first black hero, a superhero, in our nation. And in the 60s, that wasn't pretty much a really good idea for some. So there's... A whole big political issue there in the story, but it's a really, really good story. Uh, John Ridley, who's also a writer, and mm -hmm. he's written movies, and I've just been grateful to have been associated with so many really good writers. He was the one to write the script for that one. Great. Well, I was speaking with Scott Alley yesterday, and he told me that you are the artist for Buffy. <laughs> They're willing to continue on a one-month uh, lag behind the timetable because they want you to stay on the book. They don't want fill-ins. And he said he hopes you stay through season nine, but they haven't gotten to that point of talking with you yet. Exactly. But. Yeah, I mean, season nine, if it does happen, in reality, probably won't happen until the summer of 2011. Yeah. I mean, God, I can't see past next week. <laughs> so to tell me that, uh, I don't know. Well, this obviously takes a lot of your time. Are there other projects you're working on when you have the chance, or is this it? No, I did something for DC, and, you know, little things here and there, like a cover or a pinup, those are easy to do. But other than that... I try not to overcommit myself because I really do feel Buffy is my number one gig. Okay. Well, Georges, thank you so much for doing this. Uh, where can people find you on the interwebs? Uh, on the interwebs? Uh, internet, whatever you want to call it. Uh, well, I have a website, uh, kabalounge.com, K-A-B-A, lounge.com. Um, I've got Facebook and MySpace. Not that I check those very often, I'm sad to say, but I've got those. And, you know, always... Uh, I, I'm, I'm, I'm so easily accessible, it's not funny, so nobody has to search to find me too hard. Well, thank you for doing this. We're always Peter, looking forward to the next much. issue. I do appreciate it.